Hello, today we're going to discuss rotational kinetic energy and rolling. Alright, so when you have an object that's spinning, even if it's spinning in place, it is still moving. Okay, and because of that, it still has kinetic energy. Remember that our equation for kinetic energy for a linearly moving object is one half mv squared. Okay, we're going to call that now translational kinetic energy. So I'm going to put a little k trans there to represent that. And now, in addition to k trans, we're also going to have k rot or k rotational. All right? And we're going to make the same relationships we've been doing at, throughout this unit. Okay. The rotational analog for one half, of course, is one half. The rotational analog for m is i. And the rotational analog for v is omega. So just like we had one half mv squared for translational or linear kinetic energy, we're now going to have rotational kinetic energy is one half i times omega squared. Okay? With that, now we need to investigate our unit, see if everything makes sense here. So if we express our units here, so k is one half i omega squared. Okay. All right. So our units for i are kilograms meter squared, and our units for omega are radians per second. But we're going to square that. So radians squared per second squared. Okay. Again, you multiply together, the radians kind of disappear. So you get kilograms meter squared per second squared, and that is a joule. Okay, So our unit for rotational kinetic energy is the same as it was for translational kinetic energy. It is still the joule, and that's going to have some applications here in a second. All right, when you have an object that's rolling, it has both translational and rotational kinetic energies. Let's go ahead and make a nice circle there. All right, so I have our circle. When an object is rolling, that means that its center of mass is moving at some speed, v, and there is some rotational speed as well. Okay, we'll call that omega, of course. In order for an object to roll, there must be friction. Okay, and this is called rolling friction, but it's really static friction. Okay, it's not our traditional, what you think of as sliding friction, but it is rolling friction. Okay, and when we have an object that's rolling, even though the center of mass may be traveling slower than it would have without the friction, that rotational kinetic energy is still usable energy. Okay? It's not like when we're losing energy due to friction as being heat energy, or it's just unusable, but the rotational kinetic energy is, in fact, usable. Okay? So if we were to ask the question about the kinetic energy of this object, we would say that it would be the, the rotational kinetic energy plus the translational kinetic energy. Okay? So it would be one half i omega squared plus one half mv squared. Okay? And there's an interesting application here. If the object is rolling without slipping, then we know that the angular speed is equal to the linear speed divided by the radius. That equation we talked about earlier in the unit, where omega equals v over r. Okay, so if the object is rolling without slipping, which is all the ones we're going to be looking at at this point, then omega will equal v over r. So what's going to end up happening is you're going to have some interesting things here. Okay, Remember that i is always some coefficient times mr squared. Okay, Let's just say this is a disk. Okay, For a disk, we know this is going to be 1 half mr squared. And omega, we just said it was v over r. And if we square that, it's v squared over r squared. And if you notice then, Something pretty neat happens. Or our r squareds will cancel out. And so we're left again with some coefficient times mv squared plus one half times mv squared. So now we can combine those terms together and get a velocity. Okay? And this is where this is going to apply is due to conservation of energy. Okay, so we have an object on an incline. Let's say it has some initial position up here and it's going to end up down here in the draw there. Okay. And so we have a change in its position. And again, look at gravitational energy which is conservable. Okay. So we have a change in the position right there. And so if we were to look at the conservation of energy for an object rolling down an incline, we would say gravitational potential energy at the top 
as it rolls down, it turns into both rotational kinetic energy and translational kinetic energy. Okay, so when you have an object that rolls down an incline, not only now is the energy turning into translational or linear kinetic energy, it's also caused going to the object spinning as well. Okay, so if we set this up, we say MGH equals one half I omega squared plus one half mv squared. And again, if it's rolling without slipping, which is what we're going to be dealing with, omega will equal v over r. We can plug that in for our omega value here. And that will then allow us to combine like terms like we talked about on the previous slide. Okay, so once you combine those like terms, now you can actually solve for the final velocity. And if you notice, it should make sense now. Okay, if an object were simply sliding down the incline, we would have no rotational kinetic energy. So all of the potential would be going into translational. So anytime you have an object that is rolling down the incline, it will be going more slowly than it is if it is sliding. Okay, because some of that translational kinetic energy is now being converted into rotational kinetic energy. Alright, let's revisit the figure skater problem. Okay. And this is a very common AP problem. I don't know if it will be on the new AP exam or not, but it's a very common problem. Let's think back to our conservation of angular momentum. Okay, so L0 equals LF. She has some initial angular momentum, some initial angular speed. Then she has final angular momentum and final angular speed. Okay? Just as a reminder, we'll use a little trick here. Originally, she has a large I, a small omega, and then after she pulls her arms in, it's a small I and a large omega. Okay, which one of these is larger after the fact? Of course, omega is. Okay, if we think about our kinetic energy relationship, and if she's spinning in place, she does have kinetic energy. Okay, if you look at this relationship here, what are we doing to the omega that we're not doing to the rotational inertia? Exactly, we're squaring it. Okay, so when she pulls her arms in and increases that omega value, we're now going to be squaring that omega value, okay? So when she pulls her arms in and her kinetic energy will increase after she pulls her arms in, okay? Because due to conservation of angular momentum, we have that internal force acting on it. And so the K value will increase because omega increases and is squared, okay? Because we square it, now, it's going to go up by that factor by whatever it increases, okay, because we know I is going to be decreasing. So now omega increases, we square that, and now our kinetic energy will get larger. So for the, roller, for the uh, figure skater problem, angular momentum will be conserved, but kinetic energy will increase. Thanks.